Hello, welcome to lesson number three of unit number nine on the Kingdom of Funan. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about the political organization of Funan. Uh, as I said, Funan uh, occupied a strategic vocation between China and India, which gave it advantage in the Indian Ocean trade. Okay. So China, Chinese merchants and Indian merchants uh, would pass through Funan would do some training in Funan, would um, stay for a while in Funan port cities, okay, months at a time. So uh, this allowed Funan to uh, become powerful uh, in the region of Southeast Asia. However, there were other states in Southeast Asia uh, that wanted to occupy that same position, that, that wanted to be as powerful or more powerful than Funan. So, of course, Funan wanted to remain the most powerful state in Southeast Asia. How did they do that? Well, they sent something called tribute missions to China. And a tribute mission, essentially, is when uh, the government or the king of Funan would send representatives to meet with the emperor of China. And they would give the emperor of China gifts. It could be gold, silver, uh, valuable items. Um, there's even a Chinese record of the Funan king having sent elephant, an elephant and a rhinoceros as gifts to the emperor of China to gain favor from them. Okay. So uh, the king would send, the king of Funan would send gifts to the emperor of China and in return the emperor of China would recognize Funan as a vassal state. Right. So there's an important vocabulary term, vassal state. A vassal state basically means a state that is subservient or, or under a more powerful state. But that more powerful state um, will basically say that uh, although you are under me, you're not as powerful as me, uh, you are my friend, I will protect you, and I will favor you when it comes to trading. Okay, so again, Funan became a vassal state of China. They would send gifts or tributes to China on a regular basis so that they could remain a vassal state. That is a friend of China, but a friend that is viewed as being uh, less powerful. Okay, so China would provide Funan with protection and favor in trading. And that allowed Funan to remain as the uh, most powerful state in Southeast Asia, okay? because they had this, uh, this very powerful ally or friend in China. Now, uh, China, as I said, was more powerful than Funan. However, Funan was the most powerful state in Southeast Asia at the time. And Lesser states or less powerful states or kingdoms around Funan were also recognized as vassal states of Funan. So you can imagine uh, if we have a ladder, we've got China as the most powerful state on top of that ladder. And then under China, we've got Funan as a vassal of China. Okay, and then under Funan, we have vassal states as well. All right. One of the vassal states of Funan uh, was a state that is known as uh, Tonsun. Now, Tonsun is the Chinese name for that state. Okay, I'm sure my pronunciation uh, of that word is atrocious, but I apologize. Uh, so Tonsun, as we know in the Chinese records, we're not exactly sure where it was located. However, historians believe that it was located around the Isthmus of Kra. As I said uh, in a previous lesson, Funan was located in modern-day Cambodia, Vietnam, Central and Southern Thailand. Okay, so uh, Funan actually prob probably did not have direct control over uh, modern-day Southern Thailand. All right, Tun Son did, or it's likely that Tun Son did, but Tun Son was a vassal state of Funan. Now, why was it important for uh, the king of Funan to control 
Tan Sun. Well, as I said, the Isthmus of Kra was very important. Remember I said in a previous lesson that uh, Chinese merchants would um, move across the Gulf of Thailand, okay, they would dock their ships around Chuhon area at the Isthmus of Kra, then they would travel across the Isthmus of Kra, okay, and load all their cargo back up onto ships around uh, Ranong area, modern day Ranong province, okay, on the other side of the Isthmus of Kra, and then they would travel across the Bay of Bengal to uh, meet the Indian merchants on the other side okay, if they did not do their trading uh, in one of the port cities of Funan. All right. Um, so it's really important to understand uh, this kind of hierarchical structure. All right. So we've got China at the top, under that we've got Funan. Under Funan we've got Tonsan, which controlled the business of Kra, which was very important for trade. All right. I've just provided you with some interesting images uh, that I found. This is a way that uh, the goods were transported across the Ethnos of Kra. They're being pulled by an elephant. Okay, so again, they would, the merchants would dock their ships. Uh, they'd load their cargo onto these uh, contraptions here. And they'd be pulled across the land by elephants until they reached the other side of the Ethnos of Kra. Okay, where they'd be unloaded and then reloaded back onto ships on the other side. Just a bit of inf interesting information for you there. All right, so that's it for this lesson. Thank you for listening.